what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so we've been talking about candy man because candy man has some special screenings earlier this week and it has gotten some of his first reactions not to say that this is mostly saying that the film is overly good or anything but i know that a lot of you who watch this channel are excited for candy man myself included uh to start off you have a response or reaction to the film stating that I've seen Candyman once already and cannot wait to see it again. <laughs> if I see it five times, will I conjure the honey hook? Hashtag tell everyone. You have another one here. Had a really good time noping the F out of my seat last night at Candyman. I'll be reliving horror moments from Nia DaCosta's film for a while. Thanks to Monkey Paw for the screening and raising the bar. Hashtag tell everyone. Another one, my wife and I saw Candyman last night and loved it. Col Coleman Domingo absolutely kills it. The entire cast is phenomenal and it definitely turns the original concept on its head. Go see it safely if you can, of course, out on August 27th. And here we have another one. Man, all I'm going to say is I'll be sleeping with my light, my night light on. Candyman 2021 is a must-see and a true great sequel of the original. Jordan Peele takes the cult classic and given elevated takes the cult taking the cult classic and giving elevated to the next level while staying true to the classic story another one here saw a screening of Candyman tonight and loved Nia DaCosta's instincts and her powerful recontextualizing of the story in clever ways that avoid re-traumatizing a black audience another person from or another person just in general well worth the wait Candyman is finally hitting theaters on August 27 and it shouldn't be missed bravo to the entire cast and this filmmaking team Here's someone else saying, I saw Candyman tonight and I loved it. There's much to be written about and talked about in this movie and I can't wait for its release. I love black people. So just to go off of that, all those reactions, I'm sure a lot of you who watch my channel are black. I am black myself. Uh, hearing these responses and seeing these responses like this, it does make me even more excited for the film. I was always excited for the film. I was really intrigued to see what Nia DaCosta could bring to the table. I myself will be getting to see it next week on August 24th. And the review embargo in its entirety will lift the following day on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. And my review will be up on this channel. No spoilers whatsoever. I may even do a spoiler review depending on how good the film actually is and what it has me thinking about after i'm done watching it because i'm sure this movie will give us a lot to think about as it pertains to a lot of the things going on in today's uh social spectrum i'll just say a lot of the things going on politically etc and everyone that's already got a lot to say about the fact that the movie is going to be overly political and have too much of an agenda behind it or be too much about classes and race and all these other things it's just like i don't I don't know what else to tell you other than go back and watch the original film and kind of just refresh yourself on the whole Candyman lore and the whole legend itself and where it stemmed from and what what goes into what made Daniel Daniel Robitaille the way he is. It's not to say that this movie will not suffer from I because I, it looks like this is not taking a subtle approach as the original film did, but it depends on how. How much are you departing from that subtlety that I would say was brilliantly done in the original is what's going to end up be determining to me whether or not that subtlety should have stayed more so than going more so this ham this hammer to the nail approach that I feel like we're going to get more so they're going to be calling out certain things but not in the vein of a Black Christmas 2019 where it's it's done to the point where you're kind of just you're you're disgusted by the narrative I don't think it's going to be done an overkill it's going to be drawing attention of course to a lot of things that people like to talk about in today's climate uh, i don't want to go into any specifics about them i want to say that for the review itself and i'm really glad that these reactions have come out about the film and i'm glad nia DaCosta seems to have given us a worthy continuation from the original film from 1992 because I know a lot of you probably like myself, you've seen the, the other Candyman films, definitely a step down. Tony Todd was, of course, brilliant in all of them, but, you know, they just weren't the same. And going back to Tony Todd, I noticed that none of these reviews are actually sh short reactions, I'll say, rather. They're not mentioning Tony Todd. And I, 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 if you follow me on Twitter, I've said this in tweets. 
I think what's happening is that somehow Daniel has found a way to just he's taken what happened with Helen and kind of like that was a lot of you branched out onto it under the tweet. Helen was kind of like a test subject for this now greater concept that he's now fully developed. And this is what he's been doing over the past several years since Helen's demise. He's built up and found more ways to bring people back and kind of just make them part of his own, make them a part of his legend and using them to his own advantage to keep his his story going. But also them themselves having their own individual stories and it keeps the legacy of Candyman alive while also wo woving in all these other new different narratives that can be tied to Daniel himself and just make him stronger in the afterlife. And what will end up happening is Daniel will be using and appearing in the film as these different victims that we've been seeing, uh, like like the Sherman character who, you know, was handing out candy to the kids and the police killed him unjustly because they identified the wrong man. We won't be hearing their voices. We'll always hear Tony Todd's voice throughout the film. That's what I think will happen with each new iteration of these quote unquote candy men that we'll be getting. We'll not hear their voice. It'll be Daniel's voice up until the final moments of the film where Tony Todd will appear in his original form and we'll see him at the end, kind of like a final boss type of moment. That's what I think will happen. The overexposure of the character is not necessary at all whatsoever. You can effectively tell a good, effectively have a good Candyman film without having uh, the actual Candyman be overly exposed throughout the film. And I think that's one of the things that the sequel suffered from. Candyman was shown in the original, but, you know, things were built up before that. And it wasn't like he was overexposed when he was shown. He would come and go, come and go, come and go. He wasn't like prolonged in any of the real movie. He wasn't prolonged on the screen, I guess. His his presence was felt, but it wasn't overkill. He was very ominous when his with his entrances and his exits. But let me know what you guys think about these first reactions to Need to Cost This Candyman down in the comment section below. Are you excited for it? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And, don't, and be sure to tune in next week, uh, next Wednesday, when I have my Candyman spoiler-free review up on the channel.